Hello, I'm Mark Claypool, I'm a professor of computer science at Worcester Polytechnic Institute. It's a school in Massachusetts near Boston. I uh, did this work with Shang Mei Liu. She's a PhD student of mine, also at WPI. Uh, we'll talk about EV lag. It's, it's a tool for monitoring and lagging Linux input devices. So latency degrades interactivity for computer applications, you know, whether it's your touchscreen app that you're playing on your iPad, uh, particularly so, for, uh, but for games. So games are highly interactive. So you provide input uh, often rapidly, uh, many kinds of actions, you respond to the output and the player performance matters. So players care a lot of how they do. You can make it less fun when there's uh, latency in it and it impedes your interactivity. Um, there's techniques to, to mitigate uh, latency. So latency compensation they're called. But in order to, to use the right ones and to use them in the right time, we need more studies. So more studies of games, more studies of game actions. So typically such studies are done by a user study where you set up a system where we can add latency to the interactivity. The user can play a game, play a, some sort of interactive game, small application, and the proctor, the user study researcher will measure performance or the quality of experience, change the latency and repeat. So that's a typical process. So what this means though is sort of depicted here in this case is that, that way we have the ability to add lag. And, and that usually means you take the game and you have to modify the code to put it inside the game or maybe the game engine, right? So that means there's a limited set of applications we can test. So the game is usually open source or there's sort of these toy applications or there's something that we can, we can build. So we can't actually use commercial games in that case. Uh, in addition, uh, you have to re-implement the code every time. So every game and every system, you have to re-implement yourself. That means there could be bugs. So an alternative approach that we're trying for is to uh, let us run with any commercial game, in this case, Counter-Strike. And so we have the same input devices. And what EV lag will do then in this case is add latency in between the operating system and the device. So that is latency here, which lets us run latency studies with commercial games, let's say Counter-Strike. And so that's, that's EV lag, it sits outside of it, lets us use commercial games, uh, lets us add latency to any device in Linux, and also logs the input events. And that could be useful for, for a research study where you want to uh, mine what maybe the actions are that the player did after the fact. So that's what this talk, this paper is about, uh, mentions some of the features, talk about the implementation, a bit on the evaluation and, and use. All right, and this is an outline I just sort of did an introduction here. I'll talk a little bit about related work and see the paper for more details. Um, and then go into, into implementation and then, you know, how is EV lag working? Uh, I'll show you a little bit about its use so you can see, oh yeah, it's been used in some studies and, and what, what can we do about it? And then, plus there's a demo. And then I'll sort of conclude and summarize the end. So there's a couple different areas related work. You know, one is you talk about tools to add latency. There's a bunch of network tools that do this. If we use these for some of our studies, this is just a small list. Things like DummyNet, uh, an older system, Clumsy, Mahi Mahi, NetM, just a, a small set of those. And again, they add latency to outgoing and incoming packets. So good for network latency studies, but they can't be used really for, for local latency. They don't affect your mouse click to get a screen render for a local system. There are a bunch of studies that actually have studied local latency. Um, the small, uh, list of some of them in, in this paper, uh, cloud-based game systems as well. They have a network latency, but they act a lot like local. Um, and they all use pretty much the same technique I described, which is the modify sort of a small game, sort of a toy game, and you add latency to it. And we do it in the user study and see how it works. So again, often typically not sort of a commercial game for that either. Um, one important part is how to measure local latency is another area related to work. So how do we even know what the local latency is? There's different techniques, uh, uh, papers that have talked about those from building sensors, uh, oscilloscopes, cameras. Um, we're gonna use a, a camera-based technique that we've used that others have used, and I'll talk about it in this talk to verify the EV lag is working. So an overview then for what EV lag does is it provides fixed latency for any Linux input device. You can actually lag more than one device at a time. So you can lag the keyboard and the mouse. And you can actually log the input events, one file per device for post running analysis. It's implemented using Linux EvDev, which is generalized raw input as character devices. So you can imagine the low level input of a device that comes out is, is really uh, nitty gritty grungy, but you EvDev lets it look like a character device and you can kind of read it, if you will, as a character device in a file, if you want to think about it that way, dev input with a bunch of different input devices there. The EVLAG implementation, I, we use three threads, a reader and a writer and, and a main. 
Uh, the reader and writer handle the events. The main is sort of handles the, the timers. I'll talk about each of those a little bit. So this is the reader thread pseudocode. Uh, might be a little bit small here. I'll, I'll just talk you through it. Basically loops forever. Um, basically, it's going to read from the device, the ev dev device. It gets the event. It says, hey, what time is it now? And then what time is the, the event enqueued? And it adds whatever delay you want. So it adds the lag to it. And then it puts it in this FIFO queue. And it repeats, gets the next event. So it's basically grabbing the events, adding the necessary lag to it. The writer is the thing that pulls from the, the event. So it, it, it checks the, uh, has a, the latest event. It says, oh, is it time to DQ that? Is it, has the time expired, the lag time expired? If so, then it writes it to the device again. So the device can, uh, the application can grab it and do whatever it's supposed to do with it. Uh, so, so it uses the same queue for that. It then blocks here, blocks because it gets interrupted by the main thread, that's the timer. So it's gonna pull from that queue at a, at a rate that's controlled by the timer. Uh, and the timer is handled by the main thread. And the main thread does that. It opens, it uses the Linux RTC, the real-time timer uh, with a certain polling rate. And so the polling rate just lets it, you know, so you're not uh, busy waiting on it. You're actually mostly sleeping and, and still getting good fidelity on the timer. Uh, for each device, it sets up its own FIFO queue. Every device has its own. And then what it's really doing is, is it's uh, getting interrupted by the real-time timer. And then it's uh, waking up that writer thread. So it decides if that writer thread can as an event to DQ or not. Okay, so that's a high level view. You can look at the Git repo for this if you want to look at the actual code. This is sort of pseudocode for what it does. Um, this uh, shows the example of the EV lag usage. So those are some of the options. So you can specify the buffer size. The default works well for almost all cases. This is the device you want to read. Uh, you, want, you want to lag. That's the device name, the dev input event. Yeah, you can log to a file as indicated. This is the polling rate that you might want. And then that's how much lag to add in milliseconds. So as an example, um, you'd run it this way. You have to be root. So administrator privileges to run. So that's my sudo. I'm running EV lag. I'm giving it 50, 75 milliseconds of latency. The device in this case is dev input event 10. So it might be the mouse. So this would add 75 milliseconds of latency to every mouse event. So EV lag comes with some utilities too that can be useful for doing experiments or analysis. EV parse takes the log files, which are these uh, character level input, um, input codes, and it parses them into something a little more readable. Uh, two examples here. So it gives you the time of these two actions. And this is a, a, a mouse event. And it's relatively the X moved one pixel over. It's horizontal. And the Y and X will Y moved up one, and minus six pixels. So you can process that. You can get mouse movements out of this. Um, uh, this is another event, keyboard event. In this case, the enter key and the enter key is pressed down. All right, so this is another utility comes with is evdetect. Uh, you, can, you can appreciate if you take an input device and you plug it into a different USB port, it might have a different event number. If you have a script that automatically does this for your experiments, it can break and it happened to us and so on. So this is just a script that uses evdetect to actually grab uh, the, uses evdetect as a script to match a string, find out what input device it is, and then it gives you the input device number. So it can be useful for automating some, some utilities. So they, they come with the repo. Okay, so that's a bit of implementation. Again, details forthcoming, details in the paper or in the repo. Um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about evaluation, see how well uh, EV lag works, and then uh, its use and then conclusion. So to, in order to assess how well it works, I wanna know, does it add the amount of lag we want it to? So we have to be able to measure the local latency. Uh, so we use a, a high-speed camera technique where the idea is you take a high-speed camera, put it on a tripod behind the user, filming the screen and the, and the input device. High speed in this case is a thousand frames per second. So I'm getting a frame every millisecond. And so now the user, when they go to click, in this case on a menu item, we can, we can see when the click happens and we can record the frames. So we're, we're recording throughout. We can look at the frames and find out when the mouse is clicked. Then we observe manually, visually, when does that input show up on the screen? So in this case, there's a selected item. So we can count the frames between when uh, the, it was selected and when it was clicked and subtract the two and you get the local latency. Right, so we can use this on our system, get the base latency without EV lag, but we can also use EV lag now and see if it's adding uh, the expected amount of local latency. So this graph depicts the results. So, so here is, this is the amount of latency I'm gonna add on this axis with this first case being the base system without EV lag running. And so this is the local latency measured. And what we did is we measured the average of five runs. So we did five of them. We compute a confidence interval for those values. That's that bar. So the base system we have is 25 milliseconds of latency shown by that dot with a confidence interval around it. And then so that horizontal line is the base system. So now if I, if I run 
EV lag, I want to see what it's doing. And, and this first case says, well, what is EV lag doing? Just running, right? Is it interfering? Is it adding latency because it's adding overhead? So this is EV lag with no added latency. And you can actually, the mean is actually a little bit lower, but those confidence intervals overlap. I mean, so, so it, EV lag by itself as overhead is not adding substantial amount of latency. Latency measured is the same. And then we can look at this point is 10 milliseconds of added latency with EV lag. That point is 50. Again, shown with a mean and confidence interval where that yellow dash line is how much I might expect to observe. And you can see again that those points follow that line pretty well within the confidence interval. It you know, suggests that EV lag is doing a good job of controlling the latency that I, that I want to add to the input events. We've also used EV lag in a couple of studies, and this is one of them. This was a paper that appeared at ACM CHI, this last year's CHI, where we studied the effect of local latency on competitive gamers. In this case, uh, Counter-Strike. So uh, again, a black, black box, don't have a source code for Counter-Strike want to use as an application, run around the user study and see what latency does to those players. So these are competitive players are going to care about performance and how does latency affect them? And, and in particular, high-end gaming systems versus slower systems. Um, so we had 43 people, users play it. And again, this is sort of the range of possible latencies in the system you might see. So gaming systems down on this end. So again, a 25 millisecond, that's a, a decent latency for a game gaming system. And, and they might range, actually, we've measured some systems that kind of go further than that. But, you know, normal PCs can go in even hundreds. Actually, your consoles and TVs with the game engine, they can be even in the, in the 200s. They can be, they can be really high. Um, but in this case, we're using EV lag to, to control, again, from the base system, we can add lag. We can see over this range, what does that set of latencies do to the player performance and, and quality of experience, if you will, but performance that we're going to show you in, uh, quickly. And, you know, if, if you're a, a competitive player here, how much would you gain from upgrading to get a lower latency system? So this is a graph showing those results. So, so again, down here is my total local latency. And so my base system is 25. And what I've plotted here on this axis is the score. So you can look at, that's, my, that's the score. So that's the average of those users at that latency. Uh, you know, there's points, you know, number of kills plus assists. Um, and, and so, you know, 57-ish points. Uh, and, and so there's a um, confidence interval around that mean. And then now this is adding... 25 milliseconds of latency with EV lag, 50 and so on. So this is adding latency with EV lag so that it's getting more lagged. And so this is what's happening. The score is degrading, kind of a, a, a reasonable linear fit with that. And on this axis is improvement. So if you, you had this 125 millisecond system, and if you're a competitive gamer and you bought, you upgraded to a newer system at 25 milliseconds, you know, your score would improve by 10%. And you know, that might be a significant improvement if you care about your Counter-Strike score. All right, so this is one example of, of EV lag use. Um, you can try it yourself. We, we provided a demo image uh, for this, this paper, for this work. Uh, you, link uh, above the, my webpage, you can find the paper. Um, it's a virtual machine, download it, the instructions to do so, has Linux and EV lag installed. Um, you run a, a paint application, you paint on the screen uh, with different amounts of latency, you can kind of feel how, how it looks and it kind of walks you through that. Oh, this feels really laggy. Uh, and then you can uh, look at the log files too. So you can, you can try that out. Okay, so summarize. So understanding the latency is helpful for designs and techniques to compensate for latency. Um, most user studies without EV lag have to modify code, kind of limits their use. Uh, you can't use them for commercial games, might be more bugs. Um, EV lag adds latency to input devices in Linux. So it can be used for any application. Uh, commercial games, uh, sort of our target. Uh, also logs input for post analysis. Um, download it. Again, there's a, for, for Linux, we have an app package and so apt install package. Instructions on doing so right there. Same, again, the same web page with the link. Git repo is also available as a link, so you can download open source, download it, modify it, take a look at it. Um, in fact, some of the open source is useful because we have some additional features that maybe somebody else wants to add, but they'd be useful. So enhanced parsing of, of logs so that maybe we could do something with game controllers. Uh, we could add a different amount of lag for each device. Right now, the same uh, amount of lag has to be added for each device, but we could add a different amount. That could be neat. Uh, we want to do more studies, of course. So it's available for studies, ours and others, uh, different games, different game actions, different in input devices. And then it is Linux specific, which means we've, we're limited to Linux based applications. You might, you can imagine it's not now extending the code. This is another application, but doing something similar for your platform of choice. Okay, thanks for tuning in. Happy to answer questions and talk with people. Definitely check out our paper and our website for more details. Thanks.